Welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. This week we are going to take a big step back to talk about EV charging basics. For those of you out there who are thinking of buying an EV or have already bought one. We've been driving EVs now for almost five years. We don't know everything, but we think we have something to share. EV charging is the biggest worry for people who don't drive EVs. We understand that it is kind of scary at times, but we want to put your mind at ease. Charging is easy. Charging is cheap. Charging will get even easier over time as more charging infrastructure is installed. So let's get started. To talk about EV charging, we have to talk about electricity. When we talk about fuel and mileage, terms like gallons, miles per gallon, miles per hour, and their abbreviations, MPG and MPH, are second nature. With EVs, there's a bit of new language to learn. A kilowatt hour or a kWh of electricity is a good starting point. On your home electric bill, you probably get charged per kilowatt hour. The fee likely ranges from about 10 cents to 30 cents, depending on where you live in the country. A kilowatt hour is a measure of energy used, produced, or stored. In contrast, when we talk about kilowatts, without the hour, we're talking about a rate of flow. Think of it like the rate of which gasoline is filling your tank. Our Chevy Bolt can hold 65 kilowatt hours. A top-of-the-line Tesla holds about 100 kilowatt hours. Our old Nissan Leaf was designed to hold about 24 kilowatt hours, but deteriorated to the point that it would only hold about 14 kilowatt hours when we traded it in for the Bolt. Broadly speaking, most EVs on the road now get between 3 and 4 miles per kilowatt hour. A Tesla Model X that gets about 3 miles per kilowatt hour with a 100 kilowatt hour battery has a range of 300 miles. Our little Bolt with a 65 kilowatt hour battery that gets about 4 miles per kilowatt hour has a range of about 260 miles. Chargers are categorized into three tiers or levels. They are creatively called level 1, level 2, and level 3 chargers. Let's start with level 1 chargers. You'll likely only use these at home. Level 1 chargers run on the 110 volt power you use to run your vacuum or your toaster. That 110 refers to the volts of power. The, the outlet produces 110 to 120 volts at up to 15 amps or so. To determine the kilowatt rate, multiply the volts times the amps and then divide by 1,000. So we think our car charges at 120 volts at a rate of 12 amps for 1,440 watts, which is about 1.4 kilowatts. If you have a garage, you likely have a 110 outlet there that you can use. Your new EV will likely come with a charging cord designed to plug into your regular 110 outlet. We can charge our 65 kilowatt hour battery in just over 40 hours at that 1.4 kilowatt rate. This required no additional investment in our garage. We generally keep our car plugged in when we're at home to keep the car close to 90% of a full charge. We only charge to 100% when we're going on a trip. This is a cheap way to charge. Our residential rate is now about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. In our former home in Utah, it was closer to 10 cents. So if we drive 1,000 miles in a month and we get all our juice at home, we'll need about 250 kilowatt hours. Remember, we get four miles of range per kilowatt hour on average. That will cost us about $37.50 per month, less than four cents per mile. Now let's talk about level two chargers. These generally run on 220 volt power at about 32 amps and so deliver power at almost seven kilowatts. In our car, that adds about 28 miles per hour of charging. That's helpful in a pinch, but not the way you want to charge on a road trip. Level two chargers are pretty common though. Some office buildings have them for guests and employees. Some retail locations have them, especially grocery stores and automobile dealers. 
Sometimes these chargers are available for free. You can buy a level 2 charger to keep in your car. We have one. The trick is finding an open 220 volt outlet. One source we found is RV parks. In an emergency, that could be your solution. Many people with EVs have an electrician run a 220 outlet in the garage to allow for faster charging. Almost any car can charge to 90% overnight. The new trucks with giant batteries will need more time to charge, even with a level two charger. Level three chargers, sometimes called DC fast chargers, typically deliver at least 50 kilowatts, but we found a few at Harley-Davidson's dealerships that provide about half that. Our local Harley dealership doesn't charge for charging. And we like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The fastest chargers we found will charge it up to 350 kilowatts. In theory, that would charge a big 100 kilowatt hour Tesla battery in about 17 minutes. Few, if any, cars on the road can accept a charge at a rate of 350 kilowatts. Our Chevy Bolt is among the worst, topping, mm -hmm. it out, topping out at under 60 kilowatts. Yeah, we still like our Chevy Bolt. That's though. right, we do. We, we do, do, we do, we do. Some of the best cars on the road will accept a charge at over 200 kilowatts, meaning that the best cars on the fastest chargers can truly add 200 miles of range in under 20 minutes. That's pretty fast. Our yeah. Bolt needs an hour to add 200 miles in the best yeah. case scenario. One of the reasons is that all EVs, even the best ones, slow the rate of charge as the battery fills. That is why owners and operators of charging frequently talk about charging to the 80% level. Above that level, charging really is slow. Our experience with charging on level 3 DC fast chargers is generally positive. Using a variety of apps, you can find them on your way to just about anywhere. The cost of DC fast charging varies. Most charging networks have a membership fee, so most of us belong to only one. When we charge outside the network, we can pay up to 50 cents per kilowatt hour, but we rarely do so. Yeah. We've also paid as little as 14 cents per kilowatt hour while charging in network on Electrify America in a place where the company bills per minute. Many new EV owners worry about the hassles of charging. Because most of your charging can be done at home if you have a garage, it is easier and more convenient than getting gas. On the road, charging our Bolt is inconvenient compared to gassing up a vehicle with an internal combustion engine or vice as we call them. We plan our meals for charging stops and road trips are relaxing. Cars with 300 miles of range that can charge from 20% to 80% in about 20 minutes are now pretty common. A 500 mile road trip in one of those would take only about 10 or 15 minutes longer than the same trip in a vice and would cost less than half as much. We hope you find this video helpful. In the coming weeks, we'll be sharing more of the process for completing the solar panel installation on our trailer. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining us on our journey. We'd love to hear from you, including feedback on your experience while charging your EV. The easiest way for you to share with us are just to uh, comment on our videos or on the newsletter uh, or to reply to the newsletter when it comes. So if you haven't subscribed yet, visit OurSolarTrailer.com to subscribe so you can just reply to our emails that come. We would love to hear from you. Bye. Bye now. Mm -hmm.